Okay, let's get to our Bible study. Confession, what comes out of your mouth, is the fuel that operates the spirit world. What comes out of your mouth runs the spirit world. <clears throat> let's find out about it. What are we to confess, streamers? Well, the obvious ones are these things here. Now, generally speaking, this doesn't hold true in every case. Generally speaking, this is mostly external, sinning. You're sinning, you're usually doing something. Not all the time. And then this is usually, in, iniquity is usually internal. It's crap you carry around in your heart. Now, most Christians, percentage-wise, have cut way down on this. But they haven't cut down much on that. So they've stopped uh, doing all kinds of sins, you know, drugs, adultery, raping, pillaging, burning village, different types of sin. They've, they've repented of that. But here is the problem that I deal with all the time, particularly as a counselor, is what goes on inside the person's soul and the negative attitudes and feelings they have inside their soul. That's the biggest problem with Christians. This always leads to that. Okay? So for example, uh, I am not a covetous person. Material things don't, don't amount to me anymore, but they used to. Some people are like super covetous. So they rob places. They'll break into a home and rob their stuff. In order to break into a home and rob somebody's stuff, you had to have greed and covetous in your heart in order to do that. The iniquity in your soul is the foundation for the sinful behavior. Okay? So, uh, if I sleep with somebody's wife at work, I already had adultery in my soul first. See, it was already there. It just expressed itself with him or her at work, at an office affair. With me? Transgression is usually uh, mistakes, screw-ups, errors, goof-ups, failures, flops, that kind of stuff. Breaking of the law. Oh, I tried to do this. Oh, I blew it. Hosea, chapter 5. Jehovah said, I will return to my place until they what? acknowledge their offense and seek my face. For in their affliction, they will seek me early. Here's a beautiful scripture to illustrate how God helps people through adversity. If a person won't repent voluntarily, and you won't change on your own when God asks you to change, stop yelling at your kids, stop yelling at your spouse, stop doing that, please quit that, because you're going to hurt yourself, and you're going to hurt them, that's hurting me, and you won't do it, God will then not cause but allow junk to come into your life and you will then have to take a temporary whipping okay. and some of these weapons are whew, wow they're bad and the way it works is the more stubborn you are the more beating you got to take there's a direct course between your trials and tribulations and how stubborn you are. And you know who you are. Stubborn people have to be flogged like horses. And since Jehovah doesn't flog anybody, he just kind of backs off and allows the devil to move in and give you a, a little bit of a beat down. See, and the devil, a man times smarter than me, but is, is bone dry retarded compared to the Holy Ghost. He doesn't know he's getting fooled. He doesn't see it. So he thinks, hey, that's an opening. This is sowing and reaping. Hey, I've got a chance here. I'll rush in here and smash this loser. And he doesn't know the Holy Ghost was hiding behind the scenes. He never saw him. Saying, I'm just allowing this to happen. I just moved over here, and now, because I love this person, I need them to make a change in their heart. And since they won't do it voluntarily like I asked them to, I'm going to help this person end up in jail.
they need a wake-up call. Spiritual. So, ooh, this weird sickness comes in. Where the heck did that come from? The more stubborn you are, the harder it's going to go for you. Bonk. Why? Because when the devil beats on you too much, guess what you do? You'll come home. If he just beats on you a little, you can tolerate it. Yeah, you can put up with a lot of crap. Yeah. You can put up with a lot of pain, particularly women. Women are stronger than men when it comes to pain. They'll take a, a whip, and I, I, I can't take. I'll take a half a beating of a woman. I'll run back to the Lord weeping. <laughs> Women will take a first class beating and hang in there. They're tough. And that toughness works against them. We acknowledge, O oh Lord, our weakness and our iniquity. Here it is in here. I acknowledge that these thoughts, these feelings, this negativity in my soul is wrong. And our fathers iniquity okay. yeah so your dad was a grandpa was a bootlegger your grandma was a whore uh, you that you were gun runner whatever it was that was going on in your your crazy family up the line there look at that we have sinned against you you just acknowledge it okay. if you don't acknowledge it you can never be healed ever it's impossible you cannot get healed I will declare my iniquity. I will be what? Sorry. Translation, Jehovah won't take just lip service from you. See? That's religion. Religion is crap. That's church. Church is crud. You don't just say something. See? You go into the Lutheran synoid. You open your little Sunday morning uh, brochure, and uh, it's got everything outlined in there, sir. Brrr. First we're doing that, then we're doing that, then we're praying this prayer. Then you stand up like a cyborg. That prayer is useless. Why? There's no contrition. There's no sorrow for what you did. When you hurt her, when you hurt him, when you, er, you hurt the Lord first, before you hurt that person. So you're not even sorry you hurt that person because he had it coming. Well, that attitude of he hadn't coming is going to let the Holy Ghost kind of back off you. Somebody's going to come in and give you a horse whooping until you make a modification in your attitude. If you hurt the Lord and you screw him over and you stab him in the back and you're not sorry for it, what's that telling us? Well, Paul says, your conscience is seared. You're now beyond the range of help. You can't be helped once your conscience is seared. I don't feel anything. I never have. Well... All you got to do is pray, Lord, help me feel something. If you're praying for that person, you better run. What's going to happen? He's going to answer your prayer. He's going to back off. The devil's not going to see it. And it's time for a whipping. And suddenly, you're going to care. That's the beauty of adversity. For we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and those who are called according to his. Come on, amen. Yeah. Well, this is going well. I will declare my iniquity. Oh, there it is. Psalms 38. If you if you just by say it by rote. Oh, this is a repentance prayer today here at the Lutheran. We are sorry for what we've done, and it's wrong. Thank you. Click. Now, let's get our hymnals out. Crap. Okay. That ain't a prayer. That prayer was never heard by God. Just throw that thing in the trash. 
Why? No contrition, no sorrow. Luke chapter 5. When Peter saw Jesus, what did he do? Oh, this is the greatest thing in the world. All you've got to do is copy Peter tonight. You can have any miracle you need. If you just follow this pattern that God showed you, here's how you do it. Nothing will stop you from getting healed or delivered or anything else. Nothing. Here's how you do it. How do you do it? Simon Peter saw Jesus. He fell down at his feet. Doing what? Confessing. Speaking it out. I am a... <laughs> well, that's how you do it. Some people, unlike Peter, are too dignified to do that. Who are those people? American church people. See, they're so churched out. You've got to sit a certain way. You sit in your same spot every week. You don't vary off of your church spot. You sit your ever-spreading fanny down in this section. And then you just look around. You kind of absorb what's going on. You hope it's a good sermon. You're praying for a decent song this week. Okay, that's going to get you nothing from God. You're churched out. You see, you're too prissy. I look a certain way. I got my bonnet on. See, you have no chance of getting healed. None. Why? Hey, what's people, what, what are you going to think about me? If I, I'm going to do that? What, are you crazy? We don't do that here in America. I got news for you. There's some people do do it here in America. People that are desperate for miracles will do it. People who are indifferent to them, they won't do it. See, I can't look that way. I, I'm 64 years old. I, I'm a dignified. That's too bad. Then you, then you die sick. You're dignifyingly dying sick. Peter said, the heck with that. I need a miracle. Whoa. You're going to have everything I have. Why? Peter wasn't churched out. Psalm 32. I acknowledge my sin. I have not hid my iniquity. Oh, these are beautiful verses. I will confess my transgressions. And guess what you get? I get forgiveness. Wonderful. That's what you were looking for. You wanted to be forgiven. First John chapter 1. If we confess our sins, God is faithful, not me. God's faithful, and he's just. He will what? That's what I was looking for. I want to be forgiven. I don't want to be like the Pharisees and die in my sins. That means i got to enter the gates of hell. The demons drag you down there, and you're screaming, and nobody ever comes for you. I don't want to go there. A homie don't play that. I want to be forgiven, so what am I going to I'm going to confess it. I'm just going to acknowledge it and cough the thing up. I'm not hiding nothing. Psalms 51. King David taught us how to pray, didn't he? Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, my, my, the rotten stuff in my heart. See, you may have repented of committing adultery, but the iniquity is still in your heart, and you're still undressing every gal you look at. Brrr, take her clothes off, strip her pants off, pull her blouse off. Oh, what's she look like? See, it's in there. Iniquity. In. I'm not sinning anymore. I'm not touching that person. But the iniquity is... Ugh. Lord, I hurt all these people, but I actually did what? I hurt you first. Whenever you hurt a friend, a family member, a coworker, you're not hurting them first. You're hurting Father first. Why? Father loves that person as much as he does you. When you screwed them over, you were screwing him over. You were supposed to do unto others as you would let them do unto you. I sinned against you, and I'm sorry. All right, how'd that section go? That was a quick one. I'm going to go, I'm going to get done with this. I'm going to do it. I am. Confession without repentance makes me feel better. But, oh gosh, it doesn't work, does it? Feels better. Okay. What's wrong with this scene right here? What is that? 
All right. That's a confessional booth in an old Catholic church. See that big thing there? There's the priest. There's the penitent center. What's wrong with this scene here? This guy is saying, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. Hail this and that. Uh, this week I stole a pen at work. Instead of saying from the father here, weren't you in here last week and stole a pen at work? He's, he doesn't do that. Okay, say this, repeat that, sing that, you're forgiven. The father is lying to this person. That person was never forgiven. See? What should he have said? Should have gone, Brother Mike, on him. Don't come back in here Do you stop stealing pens. Why? Because I read the Bible. I didn't listen, read the Catholic catechism. See, I want that person forgiven. So I got to tell him, look, I love you, but we got to make some changes here. Boop, 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 boop. If you're not going to change, I can't help you. Don't come next appointment. You, you leave. Some people are good at this, aren't they? King Saul was good at it. Mouthy repents. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Saul says to Samuel, I have sinned and I have transgressed the commandment. He admits it. He admits it, like the confessional booth. I took the pen, I said this, I cursed that, I did this. I did it. Saul gets through the confessional booth, but what's the problem with him? What was the problem with him? Therefore, I pray you, Samuel, pardon my sin, turn with me that I may go worship the Lord. <clears throat> if, I, if I screwed you over and I say I'm sorry, that's good. Okay? That's not good enough. Why? I hurt God before I hurt him. And Saul never went back to the Lord and repented. He did to Samuel. He confessed it. But he never went to Jesus for it. Saying you're sorry to the person, good. Without saying you're sorry to the Lord, not going to work. Judas did the same thing, didn't he? Matthew chapter 27, he, he sees that Jesus is not getting out of this mess, so he goes back to the temple and he repented where? Within himself. See, when I did a prison and, and a, a jail work for a couple of years, I, I had a lot of people who had what I call jailhouse religion. And that means they get religious while they're under fire, facing a sentence, uh, facing prison, facing pressure, fear, scared, all that stuff. So they become Christians temporarily. And then when they get out, they're back on whatever they're doing, robbing houses and smoking crack. Okay? Why? They had, no true, they had no true spirit man born again conversion. They had a soul conversion. They were emotionally repenting. They never had a serious conversion of the spirit man. They never really changed in the heart. See? So while you're under pressure, they cry uncle. See? In cage fighting, it's called a tap out. See, they, the guy's down on the mat there, and his bones are cracking, so he's tapping out. They interview him after the fight. They got all kinds of excuses, and he poked me, and then the so they're back to jailhouse religion. See, there's no true change there. If, if this had happened, I would have beaten him. They got excuses and blame. Following that, it's the same thing. You can't just repent to yourself. Gosh, I'm so sorry I sinned. No, really, I'm Jody Arias. I'm just sorry I got caught. <laughs> so he repents to the priests, and I betrayed innocent blood. And the priests here, unlike the Catholic priests, they said, we don't care. That's your problem, Jack. And what's he do? He never goes back to God and repents. He only repented to them. See, repenting to the person you hurt is only half of it. It's not good enough. It's 
It's essential, but not good enough. You've got to repent to God. Judas wouldn't do that, and so he, wow, it went really bad after he was hung. 1 John chapter 2. He that says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments, is a, a liar. See? The truth is not in him. They've got jailhouse religion. Matthew chapter 7. Not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Only people who do. So when they get out of jail or prison or when the, when the, when the tap out's over, they go right back to their old sin because their iniquity inside was never purged. Many will say to me, haven't we done all these wonderful things? I never even knew you. Bizarre. What's, what happened? Inside, see outside they're doing, you're, you're, a, you're a church person to the max. You got everything going over there. You're singing, you're praying, you're helping out with the homeless, you're cleaning the place up. You're doing these things. But the question is, inside here, has there been a change? Okay? People do things for different reasons. There's a number of different motivations. I will do something and help you to be accepted. I will do something and help you to be liked. I will do something to get benefits out of you. I'll do something to manipulate you. There's all kinds of reasons people do things. But if there's iniquity in the soul, it's a waste. You imagine spending your whole life like Mother Teresa doing this incredible good work for all these people and have it amount to nothing. Can you imagine that? It happened right here. I never knew you. You had iniquity. You never, you never repented in here, inside. Proverbs 28, if you cover your sin... You cover it up, you will not prosper. But if you'll confess it and forsake it. See, the conventional booth doesn't work. Father, I've sinned. I did this and that and that. I also did it last week. I did it the week before. It's not working. If you come to God and you're truly sorry for what you did to yourself or that person, and you know you hurt him, and you apologize to that person, you'll change your behavior. But if you're going through the motions, you're not going to change. You'll go right back to that old behavior. You won't change. Lord, I was sorry. No, you were only sorry you got caught. You were only sorry you were disciplined. You were only sorry you sowed iniquity and you reaped corruption. That you're sorry about. That's not sorrowful sin. Paul said, godly sorrow leads to repentance. Romans, if you are truly sorry to him, You'll change how you treat her. If you're not sorry to him, you'll go back to your old habits and hurt her and abuse him. And do this is not good enough. Have you ever heard of a mental illness called Narcissistic Personality Disorder, NPD. These people are freaks. Okay? Uh, I rarely run into somebody that has it, fortunately. Uh, it's an, it, basically an incurable mental illness. It's the only mental illness Satan has. He's incurable. He's absolutely incurable. 
a narcissist, if they get caught in something, they've got a whole spiel ready to come right out. Now, boy, it sounds convincing. All narcissists have what? The high IQ. All of them. You've never known anybody, never known anybody as a dummy that was a narcissist. Those people are selfish. That's the difference. <coughs> Narcissists are bright. They can outsmart you. And they'll come up with a pity party you won't believe. I mean, it's fake. It's fake. They go right back to it. I'm sorry I hurt you is not good enough. I'm sorry here. That's good enough. That will stop me from hurting him anymore. I will forsake it. If I know that first I hurt him before I hurt my friend. If you're still doing the same thing over and over again and you've been asked a thousand times to stop, if you'll stop just for a second, think. I really don't care what God thinks about that. You didn't hear me. Do it, to, do it in the next five minutes. Just think about something you're doing over and over again, okay? You're thinking about it right now. No, I really don't care what he thinks. See that? Feel that? And don't raise your hand. There's a sense in there that, you know what, I don't care anymore. It's just like, I said I was sorry. No, you weren't. And so that never changed. See the difference? This is all lip service here. The iniquity's in here. This is just vocal. All right, next section. A confession must be sincere, and you must have some courage to do it. Doing this stuff is not for cowards. Gutless, carnal Christians, psh, they never get past this stuff. They just stay right there the rest of their lives. They sit in the pew the rest, rest of their lives. They amount basically to nothing spiritually. Matthew chapter 10. Whoever confesses me verbally, I will verbally Confess them before Father. The Bible says that each and every born-again Christian that makes it the glory gets ushered into the throne room and introduced to Father by Jesus. Every person. There are certain people who don't get ushered in. Who are those? Cowards. John chapter 12. A bunch of the Messianic Jews and the priests, they all believed Jesus was the Messiah. They truly believed it. But they never got ushered into the throne room after they died. Why? They were afraid. They didn't want to be thrown out of the megachurch. So they took the coward's way out. Oops. Romans chapter 10. Paul quotes this verse in Isaiah 49. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, confess heart where the iniquity is, you will be sozo, delivered. For with the this is nothing. Alone. Talk is cheap. In your heart is where the miracle, the new birth, occurs. This causes that. If it's working properly. If you're a narcissist, you can fake that 
and sell them a bill of goods with that. It's easy to do. You're smarter than they are, right? You've got anybody here a narcissist? You're smarter than your relatives, right? You see them coming, you got a, a spiel ready for them. You got a pity party. What? Me? I'm being persecuted. Oh my goodness. Like that one? No, raise your hand. You know who you are. <clears throat> Isaiah 49, the scripture says, whoever believes on him shall not be, wow. Negative confessions cause a problem. What are those? Well, it causes all kinds of problems. Matthew chapter 12, every... Argus, what is that? Everything you say is being recorded by the Holy Ghost. Every single thing human beings say. How does he do that? I don't have a clue. How in the world can you record the words of 7 billion people on a planet? How does that work? It's called omniscience. How does that work? I have no idea how that works. I don't recall what I ate for breakfast. How you can remember everything everybody says is a God thing. But the Bible says it happens. Even casual words, what's up? How you doing, bro? That got recorded. That was a useless word. Useless. Absolutely useless. How you doing? You don't care how that person is doing. That's just the greeting of some kind, there's nothing there. Okay, well, I don't care how you're doing, you don't care, how you doing, how are you? No, what? That means nothing. What scares you if they start telling you how they are, then you go, oh God, well, they can't believe that. Hey, here's Brother Mike's card, go tell him. Everything you say that they, not think, speak. Wherever you said, see? Scary. Believable. For by your words, you will be justified. And by what you're saying, you will be karikazo. That means, uh -oh. you have to face justice. And none of us want to face justice. Nobody does. Because if I face justice, I want to get what I deserve. I don't want what I deserve. I want mercy. I want grace. If I get what I deserve, I'm dead. For there is None righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the majority. If I get justice, I don't have a leg to stand on. The jury's going to come back quicker than they got Jody Arias for me. They're going to be out like a second or two. Guilty. I'm guilty. Hopelessly guilty. Irreparably guilty. I'm toast. I don't want that. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to confess it. Lord, I'm, this is wrong. I feel this way. That's wrong. I'm changing. I hurt you. I'm sorry. I hurt him. I'm sorry. I apologize. Why? I want mercy. I don't want justice. So I'm just going to confess it. I want to face it. I'm just going to admit it. This is what I'm doing wrong. I admit it. I need to change this. I admit it. I hurt this person. I admit it. Why? I want mercy. I want to get healed. I want deliverance. I want help. I don't want what I deserve. I deserve to burn in hell. That's what I deserve. So I'm going to 
ask for mercy. I'm going to thank the Lord for grace. I'm going to speak it out. I am forgiven. I'm washed in the blood. I'm eligible to be a child of God. I'm speaking it out. I'm telling the devil in the spirit world, hey, this is me now. This used to be me, cursing, swearing, I'm going nuts, crack, ripping people to shreds. That used to be me. Now I'm changing my confessors. I'm speaking differently. Because my words are going to condemn me. I can't afford it. You can't even get a lawyer in heaven. They're already in hell. That was an amen. Proverbs chapter 12. The wicked are snared by what? Their lips. People who are justified will come out of trouble. If you speak it, good, it goes better. If it speaks it bad, you are going down. Why? Every idle word a man speaks, it's being recorded. Numbers chapter 14. Jehovah said, how long shall I put up with these people? They're murmurers. Nothing will quench the Holy Ghost faster than sitting around griping. I mean, it's a killer. You'll lose every benefit God ever wanted to give you. You'll lose your anointing. You'll lose your ministry. You'll lose favor. Why? You're a murmurer. You're a griper. You're a complainer. By your words, you will be justified. By your words, you will be condemned. These Jews condemned themselves. Why? They were murmurers, gripers, whiners. I don't like this, and I don't like that. I don't like them. I don't like you. I don't like you. There goes all your benefits. Flush down the stool. Why is it so bad to murmur? Because in the spirit world, you're going to get what you said. As I lift, says the Lord, as you have spoken, you get it. I'm going to die sick. I'm so burned out. As soon as you said that, that was picked up in the spirit world. It was recorded by the Holy Ghost. He heard you. The demons heard you say it, and so now you gave them legal rights to dump a load on you. Why is that? He said it. We didn't. You, you said it. They heard it. course. They heard you do it. The demons heard you do it. Everything you say is picked up in the spirit world. They, they hear everything we say. Everybody's listening to me tonight who's ever here in the spirit world. They're listening to what I'm saying. Numbers chapter 13. The men went up with him and they said, we are not able to go into the promised land and claim this land because there's too many problems there. Once again, they're murmurers. Once you start highlighting all the things that are wrong with you and your friends, your neighbors, your environment, your job, your career, your life, your marriage, your kids, once you start highlighting it verbally, well, it's picked up in the spirit world, then it gets worse. You gave the demons legal right to bring bad things to you. Why? Because you've got a big mouth. You run your mouth. Blah, 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 blah. See? You think you're, what you're saying is important. It's not important to any human, but it's important in the spirit world. See? You're letting your spouse have it. Blah, 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 blah. And they're still texting. They're, your spouse is not listening to you. They tuned you out mm, two, three years ago. But when you're speaking it, 
It's being picked up in the spirit world. Somebody's listening to you. It's not your relatives. They don't care what you say anymore. I feel like I'm talking to a brick wall when I talk to you. You are. But in the spirit world, it's being picked up clear as a bell. And you get to reap what you sowed. You let out a bunch of crap. Now you got to take a horse whipping. Didn't do that person a lick of good. I'm tired of this and tired of that. They don't care. They're not going to change. They don't really like you. In the spirit world, they hate you. They heard what you said. We can't go into the promised land and get the, guess what? What happened to these poor people? Man, it was awful. They brought up an evil report, murmuring, oh God, this is too much. The people there are too strong. There's giants in the land, all kinds of, this place was messed up. And guess what? 40 years, 40 years they hung around in the wilderness and didn't get to go into the promised land because they were murmuring. And it was being recorded. God hears what you said today. He heard every word you said. So did the demons. Now, did the not demons hear every word you thought? No. The Holy Ghost did. He heard every word you thought and every word you said. He recorded it. The problems manifest when you speak it out. You said it, and they heard it. See, you're a murmurer. You, you, gotta, you run your mouth like trolling motor on a boat. The more you talk, the more you sink into what you're sowing. If you've got a big mouth and you're a Christian, what you need to do is I don't know if they sell this at the Bible bookstore. We may start selling it, but we've, we've got, I'm going to start bringing in these small rolls of anointed duct tape. And you carry this duct tape in your pocket. We'll pray over it for you. And as soon as you start griping and letting somebody have it or start uh, uh, bad speaking yourself, I am such an idiot. I, I can't believe how bad I am. So, we're going to pray for you, and God's going to remind you, pull this duct tape out. <laughs> because what you're speaking is being heard in the spirit world. And then the demons go, oh, did you hear that? Yeah. Good. We'll just pour this hail down their throat. And it comes. Everything gets worse. All right. If you confess things out conversely, not murmuring, not saying negative things, and you go the opposite direction, it works too. Watch. Mark chapter 9. When Jesus saw the people come running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying to him, saying out loud. Okay. It wasn't tough. Telepathic communication. No. He said to him, come out of there. You speak. Matthew chapter 8. When evening was come, they brought all... To Jesus, all these people possessed with demons, and he did what? He cast them out with his, he was speaking to them, come out here, get out of that body, whatever you're saying, I will. what he said, I don't know. But he's saying something to them. Well, and we know it was re rebuking, it was something negative. You can do that with yourself. We, t we call it self-deliverance. You can speak to yourself. 
and drive that thing out, whatever it is. You're able to do that. But you've got to speak to it. Pain. I command you. See, it's not tell, you're not wishing it out. I just wish this pain. No. You speak to that thing. Speak to that thing. Speak it. Mark chapter 1. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Shush up, come out. That's what he said. Okay. Pain, stop that, come out. Iniquity, I repent of that bitterness. Stop it, come out. The meditation doesn't work here. Meditation is fine for other things, but this is not working. You have to speak it to Acts 16. This girl with, uh, who was a soothsayer, she had witchcraft demons. She's following Paul around and she's trying to hook up with him. They were trying to attach themselves to Paul. Hey, this is a great man of God. This guy's wonderful, blah, blah, blah. Well, Paul couldn't take it anymore, and he what? Says to the spirit. Now, here is the key to getting healed of, of wounds in the soul. Okay? Here's the key to it. Particularly, uh, this uh, issue I go over extensively if I'm doing marriage counseling. In marriage counseling, usually you have two people involved. You caught that one, did you? Yeah. And usually one of them is a dominant spouse. It, it's almost never level. The one spouse is usually dominating that one. See? The one I run into most of the time is the one being dominated. Okay. This spouse is putting more hurt on that one than this one's putting on that one. So this one needs help more than that one does. This one's in the dominant position, so they're more reluctant to give up their spot because they're dominating the person. So I usually get this person to come into my office. And one of the first things you've got to teach them is this person is not your problem. What do you mean? You don't live with them. I know I don't live with them, but this is a spiritual matter, not a human matter. Okay? And so, if I'm able to get that person to see that it's the spirit in the spouse that's using the spouse to hurt them, you can get the, the weaker spouse healed. And the switches. If I can't get this spouse to see that this spouse is infected like that, and it's not that person, it's the devil doing it, he's trying to get to you, there, then it's a divorce. This one will eventually leave, and the marriage is over. This one usually won't even come in. They don't want to come in because they're dominating. Hey, they're I'm kind of in charge here, so, you know, screw you. They don't want to do anything. If I get this spouse here to realize this is not your spouse, he's changed. He, we, he wasn't like, I know, he, now he's massively infected. The spirits have taken over his mind. He's deteriorated, or vice versa, whatever it is. Yeah, they've changed. They got worse, see? So Paul, knowing what I'm learning from him, he's seeing the girl saying that. It's not the girl. He knows it's not that girl. Your uncle that raped you, your brother that beat the stuff out of you, your parents who did this and that to you, if I can get you to see that that's not your mom, that wasn't your mom doing that? She was infected. She was wounded. 
and they were using her to get to you, this person wins. We can win. If you keep blaming this person, this one never gets healed. Because they see it as, he's doing that. She's doing that. They did this. They said that. They don't like. They left me. They abused. If I can't get that mental block broken here, this person never gets healed. This one, by definition, never gets healed. They don't come for help. What happens? Divorce. On to the next one. Paul, knowing much more about it than I do, saw that girl, but he didn't focus on the girl. He saw this. This is the thing in your son, in your daughter. That's why they're doing that. Your kids are dissing you. They're disrespecting you. They're dishonoring you. They're not obeying. And you're getting mad at them, which keeps you in bondage. Because you don't see it's not them. That's why you can't forgive anybody. Because you're you think it's them. See? Paul, knowing this better than we do, never had a word to say to the girl, even though she was speaking to him the whole time, driving him nuts. This guy's great, we're with him. Hey, look, he's miracle work. There he is, Mr. Wonderful. Paul knew better than to receive compliments from demons see Jesus never received one word the devil said whether it was positive or negative why he went to the source of who was speaking if the source was rotten they were removed Paul saw through the girl into there he said that's not the girl I'm not mad at her at all she's being used by him Confession brings what? Oh, man, what you're going to see tonight at the, the healing service. You're going to confess it. You're going to admit it. You're going to forsake it. And boom, you'll just get healed fast. Just like click, 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 healed. Watch this. Job 42. The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he did what? Prayed for his friends. In marriage counseling, if I can get the victim spouse to see it's not the spouse, it's the devil behind there, if I can get that spouse to pray for that offending spouse, the one they can't stand, the one that's hurting them, guess what happens? <clears throat> God will crack that one and heal this one. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I'm smoking dope. <laughs> I have seen this with my own eyes for years. I know what I'm talking about. I didn't crawl out from under a rock. You can't crawl out from under a rock, honey, looking this good. <laughs> ain't going to happen. If you can see this offending person, child, spouse, <coughs> coworker, as not just that person, but a spirit being, being influenced, manipulated, pushed, goaded by spirit being, and you change your attitude toward that person, I don't like that person, I hate it, let me get away from that, I want another job, I gotta get out of here. If you change your attitude and start, Lord, heal. Guess what happens? You get healed. <laughs> 
look at the Lord gave Job twice as much. How much would he had? He would have had nothing had he not gone and prayed for his friends. What friends? Good question. He didn't have any friends. He had no friends. Those were fake friends. Grandma used to call them fair weather friends. See, when things are going good for you, you got friends coming out of your ears. Business is going good. Oh, how you doing? Great seeing you. Thing turned the other way. You can't find a friend. You could hire a private investigator. Can't find any friends. <laughs> They're gone. They're fair weather. They're Job friends. That's a fact. I had all kinds of friends when I was living in Sam. Yeah, a bunch of friends. I had friends coming out of here. As long as I was buying the drinks at happy hour. Mike, how you doing? I had Job friends. As soon as things start going bad for you, ugh, they'll go find another, something else to be a blood sucker on. Job didn't have any friends, but he treated them like friends. If I can get the, the victim to change their attitude about the oppressor, God will move in and crack this person. How does he do it? None of your business. Your job was to pray for them, see the truth. It's not that person. It's the spirit. He spoke to the spirit, not the girl. Children who have uh, parents who go crazy struggle with this very issue constantly. They come down with Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, different kinds of mental illnesses. And these elderly parents are hell on wheels. They're nasty, they're ugly, they're pushy, they're dominant, they're unappreciative, they bark orders, they say nasty things, they curse like sailors. And instead, after a while, the person then loses their perspective on the person, and instead of seeing what's really happening here, the demons are taking their mind, the diseases suck their common sense out, they start to take offenses at the elderly disabling uh, parent. What happens then? This person naturally fades out and dies, this, the child is left permanently scarred and wounded for the rest of their lives. What happens to them? They eventually end up like them. You must pray for your friends, even though you know they're not your friends. This is a great Bible study. This is something. God's word is utterly incredible. They weren't his friends. They turned on him. Why? He didn't have anything anymore. The guy's shot now. You don't have any friends left. Fairweather friends always leave you, trust me. They always go. Relatives, psh, they're gone. It's Christmas vacation. They'll book on you. God's telling you, hey, wait a minute here. Let's Wizard of Oz this thing. There's a man in the corner behind the curtain running this fake wizard. Rare. There was no Wizard of Oz. It was an old man with hemorrhoids. You know who booked him out? Toto. Toto runs over to the thing and pulls the little curtain back. Pay no attention to that man who's an idiot behind the... You don't, you're not getting it, are you? Your sick parents, your crazy spouse, your, your rotten kids, 
it's not them. There's something else going on. What do you need to do? God's telling you, go back and look behind the curtain and see what you see. They're not your friends. You thought they were your friends when everything was going great. They're not now. Now is when I want you to pray for them. I didn't ask you to pray for them when they were your friends. James chapter 5. If you'll confess your paroptima, your trespasses, your failures, your, your mistakes, your screw-ups, if you'll just confess, right? will you do it? If you'll confess it? And then go pray for them? You get healed. <laughs> what? what? God Almighty, what happened to giving somebody a piece of your mind? Here's the problem. You only got two or three pieces left. If you keep giving them out, you'll be a vegetable. The curtain has somebody standing there running something that you thought was real that's not real. It's not your dad. It's not your dad. Let's do it like Isaiah. Ready? Here we go. How do you do it? Just like Peter. Boom. Isaiah chapter 6. Woe is me. I've been discovered. I'm undone. I am a man of speaking. And guess what? I live with all these other people in there. Saying all these things. I'm in deep trouble now because by your words you will be justified. By my words I will be condemned. Then, one of the seraphims, I'd like to see one of those someday. I can't wait to check out the throne room there. It must be a spectacular place. That's got Disneyland beat. He brings a coal over, lays it upon his, where all the puke comes out. Real puke? No, verbal negativity. All that, uh, uh. his mouth and lips. See, you're killing yourself in the spirit world because you're flapping your lips. And that's why this new divine duct tape is going to sell like crazy. I'm going to have an entirely new business with millions coming in selling divine duct tape. See, these TV preachers got nothing on me. You got miracle water? Super oil? <laughs> I got divine duct tape about to hit the planet. <laughs> I'm going to save these people's lives. As soon as you start saying something negative and giving it to the demons, the man behind the curtain, you pull out your duct tape, <laughs> you saved your life. I'm going to be a lifesaver. Why? Because you're going to shut up! Check this out. The prodigal son, he's showing you what to do. Isaiah just taught you. He said, hey, do it like I did. He's doing it too. Father, I have sinned. He's confessing it to the father. I confess against God. If you, when you hurt somebody, you're not just hurting that person. You hurt the Lord. The prodigal son got it right. Judas didn't get it right. I sinned against heaven, God, and you. See, that's how you do it. That's a Holy Ghost prescription to your miracle. I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. I hurt you. Guess what? You get healed. I'm not even worthy to be your son. Wrong. You're more worthy than ever to be God's son and daughter when you, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're in. You know what? It doesn't happen often, but I have homeless people come for counseling sometimes. You know what the th killer is? 
people that have been homeless, particularly for a long period of time, have had so many people let them down over the years, it's a laundry list you and I can't even relate to. Okay, it's 10 times worse than you, and you, and you. This list of people letting them down, screwing them over, disappointing them, betraying them, backing out on them is so huge, it's amazing. The problem is, the homeless people thought it was them doing it. So they're, they've got this deep-seated sense of anger. And it just simmers down there. It's rage. And if you say or do something with that person and happen to push one of those buttons, they'll boom. It explodes. And it's like that. It's not built up anger anymore. It's boom, explosive anger. It goes off like a pipe bomb. Boom, Boston. Homeless people can all get healed. Uh, Ma'am, if it's on the floor, it's our ring. Sorry, dear. What's the problem there? If you can get a homeless person to see it's not these people, this massive laundry list of people that have hosed them, and it was actually the devil sending these people in, one after the other, to bash their face in, that person can get healed. If you can't break that thing, they'll never get healed. Because the root of bitterness runs like the Nile River through their soul. They can't get it out of there. They think it was the Social Security Department, the clerk there, the, the one down at Access. They mouthed off. They did this. The state of Arizona did that. My parents did this. My cousins did that. They booted me out of this house. My landlord did that. And they got this laundry list of people who have betrayed them. It, was, it wasn't them. It was Job's friend. The demons sent Job's friends in. The devil took everything Job had and left him only what he could work with. Who was left? His friends and his wife. He could have killed his wife, but he didn't. She was an asset to him. Now that things have gone bad for you, everybody's gone now, except people who cause you pain. The devil will systematically remove everything out of your life and leave only the people left to hurt you. Job, you, got, you still got some integrity? I don't believe it. Why don't you just curse God and just die? I get the life insurance. She was a plant. Aren't you getting it? These people in your lives are plants. This thing's a setup. They were left there to hurt you. It's not them, it's the man behind the curtain. There's something going on behind the scenes you're not seeing. Spiritual. Dad, I sinned against God. I sinned against you. You're in. Here's your robe. Come on in. Are you going in? No. Why? Because you think it's them. Yeah, it's your ex-wife. Yeah, you. Your ex-wife. It was her. She did it. That's it. My stepdad, God, he shot her burn in hell. He did it. 
guess what? You get no robe. You get no new ring. You don't get to go to the banquet. You're left outside. Why? You thought it was them. Those people were plants. Anybody that could have helped Job legitimately, he killed them. They all died. Oh, man. Folks, I got a miracle for you here. <laughs> I got a story for you. It's so good. It's ridiculous. Watch this. A publican comes in to pray. He's the scum of Jewish society. Nobody likes him. He has no friends. He doesn't even have any Job friends. He wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven. Oh. This story is so great. You could preach 100 sermons on this one beautiful story in Mark 8, Luke 18. It's fantastic. This thing's too good to be true. It's a gem. It's... Nobody stays sick that believes this story. He wouldn't even lift up his eyes to God. He was so broken, he's humble, he crushed. Begging for mercy, confessing he's sorry. He's, he's sorry. He's confessing. The other guy that came in, the Pharisee, what did he do? The opposite. He'd been churched out. He'd been church for all his life. Uh oh. If you've been in church all your life, you're in deep trouble. You're gone. It's really bad. Guess what happened? By your words, you will be justified. By your words, you will be. He went, what? Oh, my goodness, the rottenest person in the neighborhood? Yes. He went home justified. Wow, what a great story. The prodigal son, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry I hurt you. I'm sorry. Healed. The public and oh Lord, I'm so sorry. Healed. Oh, Nineveh got it right, didn't they? Remember that? Oh boy. Some guy falls out of a fish's mouth, runs to Nineveh, still smelling like shrimp, and tells him, Hey, guess what? You guys remember Sodom and Gomorrah? We do, yeah. You're next. You think about that for a minute. <clears throat> they said, you know what? <laughs> we are going to put on a fast here. We're going to put our sackcloth on. Everybody. And the king of Nineveh, he's going to do the same. We're going to go sit in ashes. What was that? A symbolic of repentance, you know. I'm sorry, I repent. Hey, I'm going to let my luxuries go, and here, I'll just sit in these ashes. I'm sorry for what I did. Guess what happened? Correct. That city did not get judged by God for 100 years. They lasted another 100 years before they went under. Why? They did, they did what I'm saying tonight. Look, you've got to look behind the curtain. You have to look at these people not as just people. It's not just them. These people are plants. They're Job friends. They're Job's wife. Marriage. Pray for him. Pray for her. Crack. Heal. It's not your kids. It wasn't your parents. You can forgive them once you know it's. Paul looked at the spirit and said, you, it wasn't a girl. Paul went like this. Boop. I see behind the curtain. I'm watching inside. I know. Wait a minute. That's not her. That's not your dad. It's not your husband.
Uh-oh. What's the best way not to get healed? Anybody know? Blaming somebody else for your problems. See? Back to the homeless example. They have had so many people stab them in the back over the years. Ten times more than I have. They're blaming them. Hey, well, they should have done this, and they should have done that, and I should have been covered here. I should have been given that. I should have, somebody else got that. I didn't get it. They mistreated me. They hurt me. They didn't do this. They should have done that. Follow that. If you can't get that person to see that wasn't them doing it, that was a plant. Those were, the devil actually is powerful enough to motivate people. You don't know that? Yes, you do. You read Job chapter. The devil took the Sabaeans and told them to raid his property. And they raided his property and killed his servants and took his crops. The devil told your mother, who you loved for years, to give you a good cussing when she was 92 in the home. She's sitting in the hall in the wheelchair. F you! Dude, that's not your mom. Okay, you're taking an offense at a plant. Those are demons yelling at you. That's not your dad. What's going to happen? They're going to die. You're going to stay sick. Yeah, you're going down. Because you took an offense here. You didn't split it up. You didn't see the difference. It wasn't the girl. It was the spirit. Yikes. When you're counseling with an addict, it's real easy to get an addict healed if you just do the same process. Here's your addiction. Here's the person. They're separate. The spirit, the addiction demon, is pushing the person with these cravings in their body Pushing them to take or smoke or drink that. Pushing, see. If you can get the addict to see that that's not them, and their real enemy is the man behind the curtain, they can get healed. They can get delivered. In AA, they tell you, that's you. If you think it's you, you can't get healed. Because you can't cast you out of you. <laughs> you can't cast yourself out of yourself. So if you think it's you, you're an addict. I'm an addict. you got to die an addict. That, and they'll tell you that. You're a recovering addict. You're never recovered. Really? You are if you can split it and look at the man behind the curtain. If you can understand that it's the spirit, not the girl, you can be healed. Jesus walked in the synagogue, and the woman there had this severe rheumatoid. She's all bent over. What did Jesus do? Split. Here's her. Here's the demon of arthritis. What do I need to do here? You come out. The Bible says she stood up. What was he doing there? Split her. Split, 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 split. Split. I'll never forget, I was sitting in church years ago. And this guy comes in who was a nasty, filthy backslider. And he gets up out of his chair. <clears throat> he goes down to the altar. He starts crying. This guy was back on crack. He was sleeping with women from A to Z. The Holy Ghost plows into this guy right there. He stands up flowing in tongues.
I looked over to my left and I saw a couple people in the church who had been praying for tongues for years. Still hadn't spoken. Still hadn't spoken in tongues. And this guy comes in, a serial adulterer, serial drug addict, gum bucket, walking trash, fill in the blanks. Runs down the altar, boom, he stand up speaking. What happened there? Splitter. Split. The Holy Ghost is splitter. Split. Split. This guy's not an addict. That's the addiction demon. This guy's a backslider. No, he's not. He's wounded. He's shame and guilt. The, the Holy Ghost splits people, and he sees you and loves the stuff and out of you. He sees this evil and hates it. He splits the person. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. That's why he's able to love people unconditionally. Even while you're sinning and doing that, he's able to love you because he's splitter. He sees the difference between you and this thing you've got. Jesus said on the cross, oh, Father, forgive them. I know not what they do. What was he doing? Splitter! He was splitting humanity. This is sin. This is, these are demons. This is the devil. This is sin. And that's that beautiful person I ain't in love with. I love you. Why? He's able to split it. See, the reason you're going down the tubes is because you can't split it. You think it's them. Well, he did this to me. There you go. You said he. See, you're not splitting. You're not learning. It's not that person. If you blame somebody else, you'll never get healed. Here's the first two textbook blame artists. Here they are, Adam and Eve. Wow. God said, what are you doing? Where are you? Oh, I'm naked. I'm hiding over here. Who told you you're naked? Where'd you get that information? I can give it to you. Then the Lord comes to a conclusion here. The only way they could have known they were naked is if they... Uh-oh. Adam said, dude, it's not my fault. It's your fault. As long as you keep blaming God... Because I was born into a rotten family, and you sent me a rotten spouse, and you didn't answer my prayers, and you didn't help me when I needed help. Where were you when I was getting beat up? Where were, as long as you keep blaming God, you get to die sick. Why? You're not splitting. Here's the devil, here's the Lord. Split them. <laughs> You're giving God, blaming him for something the devil did. That's what Job's friends did. The devil did all those things to Job. Nobody knew it. It's not your dad. You're at fault. She, you gave her to me. By extension, you're at fault. See that? People, when they blame other people, they'll trail a blame to you. <laughs> you wasn't even around, but guess what? You talk to that person, you might have given birth to him 30 years. It's your kid. <laughs> Dude, I was out of state when... The, the Lord goes, well, let me go down the line here. What did you do? It wasn't my fault. He did it. Oh, a talking snake did it. Great. Back to Las Vegas. The serpent did that. I did. I ate it because he told me that. You see, if you keep blaming everybody else for your problem, you get to die ill. How wonderful for you. Cain, oh, the classic blamer. Hey, where's your brother? I don't get it. I don't know. Yeah, that's what these people do all the time. They, they know they're at fault, but they're trying to get out of it, but they don't have time to think about it. 
So they just blurt that out. I don't know. What's that really mean? I haven't thought of a better excuse. That's what that really means. So my own counseling session, I'm going, now how did this happen? What? I don't know. And I'm thinking, yes, you do know. Okay, you're just answering that because you haven't thought of a better lie to give me. I'll just wait for the truth. I just sit quietly there. Staring at them like Job's friends. <laughs> Pretty soon they'll cough it up. Well, yeah, I did. I don't know. What? Then they'll blame you for it. What, you expect me to watch out for them? I don't know. What are you, what are you dumping it on me for? Lord, what's your problem? Well, my problem is I, I hear your brother's blood screaming at me. And there's a reason he's screaming. Blood doesn't scream unless they're dead. And there ain't nobody around here. But I got a funny feeling. You do know something. What'd you do? Saul. Oh, your textbook. I obeyed the Lord. Yeah, I did this and that. I did everything you told me to. You ever met somebody like that? As soon as you confront them on what they didn't do, they immediately start telling you what they did do. See? They're trying to snow you. It's like interviewing politicians on the news. You ask them this question, they answer that one. You ever seen a press conference with, a, with the president, Bush and Obama? You ever seen that? Probably not. But if you ever watch those things, I mean, it's, it's like going to a carnival. What about A, B, and C? Well, let me tell you about X, Y, and Z. And they'll go right to the other subject. And they know there's a time constraint, and you can't ask a follow-up question. See? So they'll, they'll snow you with a bunch of happy horse manure. They're lying. They're all pathological liars, every one of them. Not one of them tells the truth. They're all liars. There's no such thing as a Christian politician. That's an oxymoron. They do not exist. There is no Christian politician. That's impossible. That's impossible. That's like saying there's born-again demons. <laughs> They're born again. Oh, that's great. Great, I'm a born-again Christian demon. That's a bunch of crap. You know that's not true. Why didn't you do this and that? Well, wait a minute. I did this and that and that and that and this. Okay, that's not what we, you were asked. Well, the people did it. You've got to blame somebody, so if you give them a little time, they'll come up with somebody to blame. Okay, when you start taking responsibility for what you're doing, the Holy Ghost will rush over to you like a track star to get to you to help you. If it's always somebody else's fault, he'll just leave you there. Guess what? Let's wrap it up. Positive confessions bring victory. Mark chapter 11. If you shall what? Say to your mountain. Yeah. Okay? Once again, speaking something doesn't work. Have you ever heard of the Word of Faith movement? Most of it's crap. What you do is you just keep repeating something positive over and over, like Tony Robbins. And it just works. Speak to that. I speak to my wallet. There's money in there. I speak to you. You've got half a brain. I'm speaking. It's not working. Why not? Because, again, it's a heart issue. When you speak it out, it has to be something you truly believe. You're not just roading it out like at the Sunday morning at church. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. Are you kidding me? You haven't been a friend of God in years. Jesus said, you're my friends. If you do what I tell you, you are not God's friend. Come on. Once again, speaking it out has to be here. Right? And shall believe. This duo, it's the Greek word. It's a verb, and it means to do something. It means faith and action, pistuo, to believe, do something. You have to do something. Why are you doing it? Coming from the heart. If it's lip service, you don't need to do anything. See? What about Angola and the war and so on? Well, according to, you're just talking. 
He's just talking up there. He's lying. That's not true. It's just words. Words are worthless. Words don't, just words alone, they won't work. Word of faith. Oh, I'm healed. I'm healed. How come your arm's like that? Well, I'm healed. Okay, dude, you're not healed. Okay. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Well, I went to the Word of Faith conference. Well, don't go back there. You take a look at God's Word and don't go back there. Is it working? Well, I, I'm confessing it's working, but we are our, stupid. You got to say it and believe it. If you do, guess what? The mountains go. The problems go. The victories come. Matthew 17. Why couldn't we cast these demons out? Because you have unbelief in your heart. You're doubting. You're saying it out. Come out, devil. Come out, devil. But in here, you're going, well, this thing's not coming out. Remember that? They, they had all the words down. See? <laughs> if you go to the deliverance school, they give you a manual. See? And then you, then you learn these one chapters, names of demons. Then another chapter is prayers for demons. I guess none of you have been to a deliverance school. But that's what they do, and of course it doesn't work. Why? The demons have been listening to you in the spirit world, and they know whether you're bluffing or not. They know whether you believe or not. They know whether you're here to butt. butt. <coughs> the nine disciples, come out of there, come out. Let's see, what do we say now? We're... Paul, did you bring the manual? John, where's the demon list names? The demons wouldn't come out. Why? They know when you're bluffing. They know you don't believe. They know. Everything know, is known in the spirit world. They know what you think. You told them. What do you have to do again? Once again, it, you have to speak it out. Speak. Right? Speak it out. Yes, your what? Your testimony overcomes the devil. What is a testimony? It's something you're speaking to someone. I was healed. You can be healed. God loves you. I am loved. You can be a child of God. I'm a child of God. I'm speaking it out. See? I'm not murmuring like the Jews did. Mur, 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 mur. Boom, 40 years in the wilderness. No, hey, you don't have 40 years. I got a lot less than 40. I can't afford to go into the wilderness again. Can you? All right. What's going to happen tonight? In closing, you're going to confess your sin and the sins of your family tree. We went over that verse. This is a summary. You are going to be sorry for your sin, and you're going to forsake it. Okay. Uh, you're going to be sorry for your sin, sorry to the Lord, and you're going to leave it. Your sins are going to be washed away, and once they're washed away, where are they? They're gone forever. See, The only people that remember their sins are you and the demons. Father doesn't remember it. So if you ask God to forgive you, Five times or something, four of those times is a wasted prayer. You're praying for nothing. It, it was forgiven the first time, now it's gone. Stop wasting your prayers. Switch them over to somebody who needs your prayers so you can be healed. Oop. I just confessed that Bible study to you. I believe it in my heart. I am going to tell you I'm sorry for hurting you. I'm going to repent of my sins. I'm going to confess my sins to the Lord. I'm going to forsake them. And I am going to get kaboom. If you're in the mood for a good kabooming, you will we will take a five-minute break. And then you will go through that process I just put on that screen. You are going to act like Isaiah. You're going to act like Peter. 
and you're going to remove this facade of public anxiety you run with every day. Oh, what people think of me. Oh, they don't like me. Oh, they're going to think I'm nuts. Okay, you're going to repent of that. But first you're going to confess it to the Lord. Lord, I'm so sorry I have this public persona that paralyzes me. It's all based on fear, anxiety, and insecurity. And I'm going to repent of it right now. And I'm going to come in like old Peter and Isaiah did. You know why? Because I'm sick of being sick. I'm tired of it. You're going to be a splitter from this day forward. <clears throat> You're going to see the person and the deficit separately. You know what you're going to do? Instead of Toto, you are going to run over behind the curtain. Hey, that's a fraud. That's not you. That was you. That's not my mom. That's you. That's not my dad. That's you. I am from now on a Holy Ghost splitter. <laughs> Translation, I have discernment. Going over that tomorrow at the seminar in Prescott, the gift of discernment. I just spent two hours on it here. I hope they weren't watching. All right. <clears throat> no questions. That's no questions. All right, that's the end of that. Shall we pray? Father God, I confess tonight my sin. I confess this bitterness in my heart. I confess these negative emotions about myself and about others. I confess it to you, and first I want to apologize to you, and then I'm going to apologize to them. And then I'm going to change. I'm going to forsake my sin because I am sorry for it. I'm going to repent of this iniquity in my soul, and I'm going to release it to you, and I'm going to be forgiven, delivered, and healed tonight. I'm going to receive the gifts of the Spirit and my anointing and my destiny. And I'm going to turn my back on seeing just these people as my problem. I noticed that tonight, Lord, something hit me in that Bible study. It's not these people. It's not the government. It's not the lawyers. It's not the politicians. It's not my relatives. It's not my family. It's not my spouse. It's not my kids. Somebody in the spirit world has turned them against me. And I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to forgive them. I'm going to release them into your hands, oh Lord. So I can be healed. I'm doing this for me. Amen. <laughs> the Bible study has come to a conclusion. The offering bucket is in the back. It's green. Thank you for your kindness. We will take a five-minute break, and then you expect to get healed. Amen. Good evening. Welcome to the House of Healing. This is our uh, healing and deliverance service. How's it going to go? Well, I don't really know. Every week it's a little different. Uh, I don't like to do the same thing all the time because sometimes the, the Holy Ghost likes to do, do things hither and here and there and do things differently. You don't want to have a rigid pattern to everything all the time because then you get in kind of a rut. And then everybody gets into a routine, and then, then it starts falling off again. All right, we had a Bible study tonight. How'd that go? All right. Did you believe it? All right. Uh, the mouth thing is one of the toughest things to overcome, and I've struggled with it for years. For years you get into kind of a habit in a way of just saying stuff whenever you're stimulated in your environment something happens somebody says something and it's almost like it just kind of clunks out of your mouth and it's taken me a long time and I'm still not there to retrain how I say things because uh, sometimes I say things and you know, not good. <laughs> and particularly here, when I'm uh, teaching or preaching or something, I'm actually not a teacher or a preacher. I'm actually a counselor by trade, and I don't really have any 
skills or training in that area. So I'm just kind of winging it, you know. So stuff comes out that, you know, don't sound too good. So it's a process of repenting over the years. Correct? I mean, I've never met anybody in my life that just had that Bible study and then suddenly the light switched, click, and they don't say anything wrong anymore. Ever again. I've never met anybody like that. In my experience, it's kind of a whittling process. And you, you just whittle it down over the years. It, it takes time for some things. Correct? Other things, you, you can't take any time. You know, if you're committing adultery, if you're trying to kill yourself, if you're doing something like that, it has to be repented of now. You've got to stop it now. It's going to kill you. You've got to stop it now. Drugs, now. Drunkenness, now. It's got to quit now. Streamers, this is a good one. This uh, girl came up here and got delivered from a rage spirit. And she got healed of something in her tonsils. They just disappeared. Her tonsils disappeared. And she got filled with the spirit. She's speaking in tongues right now. She's speaking in tongues right now. Some other guy came up here and got healed of arthritis in his body. This girl that got healed, her dad brought her tonight. Pray for his dad right now. Father, I'm asking you to touch dad tonight. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart that he brought his baby girl here tonight. He loves her with everything he's got. And he's the luckiest person in the world to have her. I pray, Lord, your blessings on this family. I ask you to go hunt her mother down. Holy Spirit, and just jump all over her. Blood of I pray, God, any person in that family that's sick, I want them all healed, every single one of them. In Jesus' holy name.